Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you for another Sunday morning. Be in church, be in Bible study, and just the good feeling, Lord, we have in our hearts when we fellowship together and and uh, experience all those uh, warm greetings and heartfelt uh, handshakes and smiles that uh, that we look forward to every Sunday morning. We're thankful, Father. We're thankful for uh, the blessings you brought us through this week and the way you've taken care of us. And we just lift up all our praises and our gratitude and our thanks. We also pray, Father, for those that are dealing with serious health issues this morning and other issues that uh, uh, come upon us. We pray that you would um, be with those that are bereaved, those that have lost loved ones, and those that are sick and homebound and uh, in the nursing homes and not able to get out and about. We just uh, pray that you would, your presence would be felt there, Lord, and that you would comfort and strengthen those and sustain those that need it. We pray for the caregivers, too, those that are, are waiting by the bedside and waiting upon them, the family members, Lord, that are that are waiting for uh, your blessings, your healing hand, and your your uh, help to uh, sustain them through these times. So we, we pray for all these that are unable to uh, get out and that are homebound. We pray, Father, for those that are going through treatments of different kind and those that are uh, going through different kind of procedures for health issues. We And we just pray that you would uh, be with them in a special way. Those that are waiting on test results, we we, we just pray that you would uh, give them the strength and the, the courage they need as they wait for the, the diagnosis to come through. So we pray for all of these that are that are dealing with uh, different types of issues. Father, we're thankful for our country. We, we're thankful for our, our military men and women that have given their uh, lives in service and uh, uh, all over the world that uh, allows us this privilege we have here this morning to uh, be and to worship and to be a free people and live in a free country. We just thank you for our country and we pray for our, our leaders. We pray for our president and we pray for his advisors and his cabinet and our congressmen and our senators and our judges throughout the land, all those that are that make decisions for us. We pray that you would just guide and uh, guide their thoughts and help them to make decisions that are, are pleasing to you. We just lift up and pray for our, our country. We pray for our students this morning as they go back to uh, school and set a, a schedule. We pray that you would uh, guide them, Lord, and to uh, uh, lead them and protect them and help them to make wise choices in life as they as they grow up, we we're, we just pray for our students, and we're thankful for the the, uh, the students that we have in our church, and we just lift them up. We pray, Father, for the message this morning. We pray for Brother David. If there's uh, one that's here that needs to make a decision, we pray that this would be the time, Father. Help us to remember that uh, the, the promise that you made that one who comes to the Lord will. He in no wise cast out. So we thank Him for that uh, promise, Lord. We pray that that decision might be made this morning. Thank you again for this time we have together. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. One of the more exciting things as a minister is to, to get to baptize uh, a young child who, who comes to know Christ at a very young age. And, and the hope of that is that they, they continue to follow Christ uh, from, from this young age all the way to adulthood. Um, and so today that's what we're going to do. Uh, it's Reagan Underwood's going to come and we baptize. Now, I don't get to baptize my grandchild or my child yet because I don't have you. Uh, but I, I am baptizing my sister. Um, into the family of God. Uh, Reagan uh, came to know Jesus Christ while she was a preteen camp this summer. Uh, and just a couple weeks ago, came and, and spoke with me about that. And so 
We're going to follow through in baptism, one of the uh, first steps in obedience to say, I am his and he is mine. So, Reagan, I baptize you today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Father, we, we thank you uh, for young children coming to know you in a real and a powerful way, God. We lift up Reagan as she uh, begins this journey of following you, of becoming more and more like you. God, we thank you that you have called her into a relationship with you, that she is your daughter. She is now an adopted daughter of the King. We praise you for that, God. Um, as a church, God, may we, may we sense the responsibility and the task that is ours to disciple her, to, to teach her, and to show her what it means to follow you, what it means to be a child of the one true king. Father, we love you and we praise you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Right. Is this pulpit mic off before I get close to it? Okay. This thing's bit me a couple of times today already. Hey, y'all. Isn't it awesome to see God at work and to know that the Spirit of God is drawing people to Himself, even yet? Uh, ISIS is not going to stop that. Uh, bad government's not going to stop it. We're not going to have an economic situation that will stop the kingdom of God from receiving those who are going to come to the Lord. It doesn't matter what kind of crazy things go on out there. God is at work. And He is with His people. Amen. And uh, as we depend and trust Him and Him alone uh, for what is needed, we as a church family see God accomplishes purpose. I want you to think with me today about what we as a church. Jack, this thing up here is, is feedback from monitors. Can you get rid of monitors? That's probably what it is that I'm hearing. Okay. What we are dealing with. No, it's still there. Okay. You don't mind. Is that... Believe it or not, I can handle squalling babies better than I can feeding back at them. Really? I might not even hear squalling babies. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. So, when we think about what's going on and, and we see the work of the church, we know the work of the church. We see what God is trying to accomplish in our midst. He brings people to an awareness of sin. Of the need of a Savior. He grants them a repentance to be able to turn from sin to have an awareness of who He is. He grants us faith to be able to trust Jesus and His completed work on the cross, His death, burial, and resurrection to be our salvation when we put our faith and trust in Him and Him alone. And then we begin this process of being disciples within the body of Christ. And as we go through that process, the goal is, of course, always to be in fellowship with each other and to love each other and to serve Jesus by serving each other and all of these incredible things that God has planned. And it would be wonderful if nothing ever happened to deter that process. But it, things happen. And as a church family, we have a decision to make as to whether or not we're going to pursue the situation that has caused difficulty or whether we're going to simply let sleeping dogs lie. Today, uh, I wanted to uh, let the Lord, of course, I didn't just decide to do this on my own. Uh, but I wanted to use a tool that we're already using uh, with the deacon body. Uh, and it's in the Cypress Heart. You, you see this uh, little piece that says, We are sinners saved by Jesus and baptized into the body of Christ as church. We belong together. Uh, you want to grab that. Uh, if you don't have one, they're in the Cypress Heart. Cypress Heart's in the hall. Front and back, that sort of thing. Uh, but you'll want to grab one of those. Uh, that is actually the outline for our deacons when they go uh, to try to lovingly reinstate uh, members who have become inactive. They have this. They also have uh, talking points 
for deacons on the visitation brochure. Uh, and so they have what is one, two, uh, two, and three, and a little piece of a fourth page for them to study to make sure that they understand this brochure that they helped put together. Now let me explain something about that. Uh, yes, I wrote this brochure, and then the deacon said, Preacher, preacher, preacher. You've got to change it here. You've got to change it there. You don't want it to come across the wrong way. So let's fix this. Let's fix that. And we did. And so what you have here is, uh, was doctrinally correct from the beginning and more compassionately correct by the, the help and direction of your deacon body. So as you understand this, from the very beginning, you need to look at the title and understand the title as well. Because the title, for some people to see the word sinners and that sort of thing, they may say, ooh, that, that's kind of tough. But we all are sinners. The scripture says we've all sinned in what? Fallen short of the glory of God. So there it is. We are